Go ahead, Edwin. Okay. okay, thank you, Phil. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Encouraging and Supporting Bicycling Through Employer Initiatives. This is Julie Bond, and as most of you know, I am the Project Manager for Best Workplaces for Commuters, or BWC, and I'll serve as your moderator today. Also providing support for this web conference are BWC team members Phil Winters and Jennifer Eiley. We are recording this session, and the presentation will be made available to BWC members to access on demand. Okay, um, just a few tips to begin with. Copies of today's presentation can be downloaded by simply clicking on the icon in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. You can also provide feedback to us during the presentation by clicking on the feedback button. So for example, if you can't hear, click the red box and we'll work to provide you assistance. You'll also have the opportunity during the web conference to ask questions. Located in the upper left-hand corner of your screen, please click the Q&A icon. Type your questions in the Q&A box, and then click Ask to Submit. Now, answer questions are going to appear in the box below. We will try to answer as many questions as possible during the session using the Q&A box and at the end of the session by the speakers. So when answers are publicly posted, uh, just remember the name of the questioner is not shown. Okay? This web conference is provided as a free benefit for members. Uh, BWC is managed by the National Center for Transit Research at the University of South Florida in Tampa. The center is the largest research center dedicated to all forms of public transportation. The center also offers the Commuter Choice Certificate Program, the National TDM and Telework Clearinghouse, and of course, the popular transportation TDM listserv that many of you are members of. Our help desk has over 400 questions and answers along with 115 case studies. Okay, there are many ways to stay informed regarding BWC programs and events. And I've been communicating with many of you regarding this. It's very important to our members. So please visit bestworkplaces.org frequently. We'll have updates on the website. And also, you can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, or you can read the blog. Information is currently posted on the website regarding the Race to Excellence that we just kicked off a few weeks ago. We hope you join the race as an employee transportation coordinator or a champion. Uh, just a reminder, materials are due by November 2nd, so you have, still have time, and the virtual award ceremony is going to take place on December 2nd. And we know this is an event you won't want to miss. It's going to be very exciting. Okay, today's agenda includes presentations from two very knowledgeable and effective leaders promoting and supporting bicycling nationwide. Joining us today is Allison Dewey from the League of American Bicyclists and also Jeremy Dope from ACOR Services USA. Employers across the nation are looking for new ways to encourage their employees to cycle to work. And as you have let us know, a hot topic is the new bicycle commuter benefit. Now, there have been many questions regarding the implementation of the benefit, and we'll provide the latest updates and answer your questions today. An online survey is also going to be available at the end of the session, so please take just a few minutes to provide us with feedback. We'd like to hear from you. Now, before we begin the presentations, we're going to conduct a few poll questions. These questions are interactive. Of course, they're very fun to participate in, and all we ask you to do is click on your best answer. Now, your answers are going to provide a, snatch, a snapshot of the audience today joining us virtually from across the nation. We have a lot of different people attending and from various parts of the nation. So let's go ahead, and we'll bring up the first poll question, and you're just going to need to click on the best answer that you have. Okay, the first question is, how many people are in attendance at your location doing the web conference today? One, maybe just you, two to four, five to seven, eight to 10, or 11 or more? Go ahead and just click on your best answer. Okay. Looks like they're all rolling in. 
Give you just a few more seconds to answer. Okay, so it looks like you can close the polls and, and uh, show those. Okay, um, it looks like 46% uh, are one person at a location. We have 25% with two to two to four people, 70% five to seven, 7% uh, 7 with eight to 10, and 3% with 11 or more. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of who's in a, how many people are in attendance today at each site. Okay, the next poll. What region of the United States is your work site located? Now look at these regions and, and just choose the best one for your area. Are you located in the Southwest, the Midwest, the Southeast, the Northeast, the Basic West, or some other location maybe? We might have some people um, out of the country attending this, so, so please click on that. Okay, we're just gonna wait for a few seconds as the polls come in. Okay, looks like looks like everyone has voted. Um, okay, looks like we have a good mix here. We have 13% from the Southwest, 20% from the Midwest, 6% from the Southeast, 20% from the Northeast. The largest portion comes from the West, and a couple of you put other at 6%. Great. Okay, the third poll. This is related to what our session that you're going to hear about quickly is regarding today. Do you currently offer the bicycle commuter benefit, which is up to $20 per month for employees? Now you can click yes or no, but if you don't know, that's okay too. You can go ahead and click don't know. Okay, the votes are rolling in. Okay, looks like everyone has voted. If you haven't, quickly click. Okay. Okay, it looks like 3% um, said yes, which, which is one. 81% um, no, which is, is what we expected. That's why people have been asking for this web conference. And 14% or four of you just, you just don't know, which is fine too. So hopefully after this session, you'll have some great information on how you can offer the bicycle commuter benefit. Okay, the last poll. Do you consider your work site to be bicycle friendly? So do you provide lockers, showers, bike racks, you know, anything that you might think would help your employees cycle to work? Do you think you're bicycle friendly or not? Go ahead and cast your vote. Yes, no. If you really don't know if you have those on your facility, go ahead and click don't know. Okay, looks like the holes are rolling in. Okay. Looks like everyone has voted. Okay, well, the good news is 66% of you say yes, but you feel you do have a bicycle-friendly work site, so that's great. 26% said no, and 6% are a little bit unsure and don't know. So one of the presentations today we hope will help you to look at different ways to become bicycle-friendly. Even if you're already bicycle-friendly, there's going to be a lot of great ideas Allison has to become even more friendly. Okay, that will close our session for the polls, and we're going to move on to our presentations. Okay, I'm going to introduce our first speaker. Um, she, her name is Allison Dewey, and Allison's a program specialist for the League of American Bicyclists, the nation's leading bicycle advocacy group, which works through advocacy and education for a bicycle-friendly America. The League represents the interests of America's 57 million bicyclists, including its 300,000 members and affiliates. She's been running the Bicycle Friendly Business Program at the League since its beginning in April 2008. The program recognizes employers' efforts to encourage a more friend, bicycle friendly atmosphere for employees and customers. The Bicycle Friendly Business Program honors innovative bike friendly efforts and provides technical assistance and information to help companies and organizations become even better for bicyclists. Now I'm going to turn the time over to Allison for a very informative presentation. Allison? Okay, thank you. Um, okay, uh, so my name is Allison Dewey, um, and thank you to Best Workplaces for Community for inviting me to do this webinar. I actually love doing webinars. Uh, it's just comforting for me to know that if I tell a joke, I should just expect silence. 
I, I really just have no other way of knowing, so <laughs> that's great. Um, I, um, as Julie said, I'm program specialist for the League of American Bicyclists, located in Washington, D.C. I primarily work on our Bicycle Friendly um, America program, which includes our Bicycle Friendly Business program, as well as Bicycle Friendly States and Bicycle Friendly Communities. Our Bicycle Friendly Business program um, is one of our newest programs. It was launched just last year. We've only had three application cycles, uh, but we've already designated 54 businesses across the country. And uh, those businesses really run the gamut in types and, and size and location. Uh, we, have, uh, we have farms, financial, financial institutions, law firms, engineer firms, nonprofits, medical facilities, colleges, it's a very diverse list of organizations, and all of which found in very different settings from urban, suburban, rural, and also very rural. So if uh, you doubt whether your business can actually become bicycle friendly, um, just look at the list and I bet you'll find one that is either located in a similar setting to yours, doing similar type of work, uh, employing a similar demographic, or all of the above. So today I am speaking about what it takes to become a bicycle friendly business. And I actually am going to start off with a short quiz of my own, a little, uh, more of an internal assessment of your workplace. And it's just six quick questions. Uh, so um, with various point values. So the question number one is, does your business provide secure bar bike parking? Uh, so give yourself three points if your business provides secure bike parking. Uh, number two, does your business provide showers for employees? Give yourself three points if your business provides showers. Uh, number three, does your business offer incentives for employees to commute to work by bike? And these incentives are provided year-round, just not during um, bike to work week or bike month. Four, uh, four points if your business offers incentives. Number four, does your business work with local advocates to improve bicycling conditions for your community? Oops, this one. Um, uh, okay, uh, two points if you work with uh, local advocates to improve bicycling conditions for your community. And number five, does your business have an action plan to help promote cycling within the workplace? Two points for that. And number six, does your business support a bicycle team or club? Give yourself one point for that. So uh, if you tallied more than five points or higher, uh, consider yourself on the right track. And according to our standards, you're, you're pretty bike friendly already. Um, hopefully this presentation will give you more ideas on how to become even more bike friendly. If you were lower than five points, don't worry, because this presentation will offer some some great, uh, some easy and expensive ways of making your bike place more conducive for bicycling. Okay, so uh, first I want to address the the question of why why be bicycle friendly? Um, why is it important for my business um, to to be friendly towards bicycles? Basically, it comes down to this: if employers offer a few simple benefits to encourage bicycling, the war, the rewards will be reciprocated. Um, bike, bicycling offers a great return on your investment, and here's why. Bicycling improves health, and improved employee health means lower health care costs. Uh, I'll cite a few um, examples of, of the lower health care costs. Coca-Cola reported a reduction in health care claims by introducing uh, an employee exercise program. It actually saved the company $500 per employee that participated in the program. Um, Pacific Bell, they, they did a um, kind of benchmark their fitness program, taking data along the way, and uh, they showed a decrease in employee absenteeism for those participating in the program. Uh, it decreased absent days by 0.8% and saved the business $2 million in one year. Um, fitness programs also spent about 3.3 days less on short-term disability for an additional savings of $4.7 million. Dade County Teachers U Credit Union, uh, they set up walking routes, competitions, and support systems. Participating employees earned extra vacation days, 
However, management reported that employees ended up paying fewer sick days than, if, than they earned in vacation days, resulting in a net gain in productivity. Um, reduced parking costs. Uh, if you look at what can actually fit into an auto uh, space, you'll find that 11 of your employees on bikes, um, their bikes can fit into one car, car parking spot. So it reduces maintenance, maintenance costs, material, and allows for more green space. Uh, more bicycles coming into your place of business also means an improved image for your company. Uh, with headlines such as the coolest company being green and saving the planet, companies are adopting corporate social responsibility plans that outline ways they are reducing carbon emissions and being active stewards of their community and workplace. Being green is socially responsible and admirable, and it's a key way to attract quality employees. Biking is a great way of being green. So now let's look at it from the employee perspective. What's, what's in it for them? Uh, oftentimes it is just easier to drive uh, your, your car to work. So why, why would you choose to bike to work? Um, and basically, it, it comes down to this: there, there are important, there are numerous benefits to be a, to an active commute. Uh, the employee that bikes will have more energy throughout the day. Uh, it will help them meet their fitness goals automatically. It improves health and happiness. It, it allows an employee to save their sick days from when they need them most. Uh, and it also cuts down on travel costs and saves on parking costs too. Uh, and basically, more travel options equals more flexibility. So now that you've made the case for from the management perspective and all, as well as the employee perspective, how do you do it? What are some easy ways for businesses to become more bicycle friendly? Well, um, in order to tackle this initiative, the league has broken down um, the, our suggestions on, on how to go about doing this into four categories, basically in education, encouragement, engineering, and evaluation. Uh, for education, probably the most important aspect of a business's uh, bicycle initiative, um, and plus a, a very easy way to start and instill confidence is in beginning riders, is uh, to offer some safety classes for cycling. Uh, the Lee provides a bicycle safety curriculum, and we're happy to have you use it. It's called Traffic Skills 101. Uh, it, it teaches beginners and experienced cyclists how to safely ride your bike through traffic and on paths. A brown bag lunch talks covering topics from safety skills, maintenance tips, winter riding, bike fit. Uh, there's a lot of, of topics out there that can be covered during, during a, a brown bag lunch talk. Um, also including information on how to respond to, to bicyclists in your driver's safety manual and how to properly share the road with bicyclists. Um, bicycling resources on internet, things such as bike maps, calendar of events, local group rides, what's going on. And then also bicycle maintenance classes are important so that people feel empowered to be taking care of their bike um, as, as to keep it running smoothly. This photo is uh, RDG planning and design on Omaha, Nebraska. Um, it's their whole staff on, on a group ride together. Education also can be, is considered um, including bicycling resources on your internet or in the office. This photo is taken from Providence Portland Medical Center, and it's a good uh, illustration of, of just posting resources for people to see in their, in their spare time. In encouragement efforts, uh, this is where just offering the commuter tax benefit illustrates uh, support in, in riding to work. Uh, and Jeremy will give you an in-depth look at that in, in, um, in the next presentation. But other ways to encourage cycling is to offer other incentives to ride. Uh, businesses can calculate mileage and offer prizes at certain benchmarks. And for example, um, 50 miles, after, after an employee reaches 50 miles, they get a coffee coupon, or 200 miles equals a free breakfast, and so on and so on. Uh, commuting this mileage also provides an easy way to, to commute your carbon offset um, also calories burned and other health-related data that can, can also provide incentive for, for other employees that aren't riding. Um, so you get your top management on a bike and use them as a role model. 
uh, offered a guaranteed ride home policy. This could be as simple as implementing a policy that could cover a cab ride home twice a year if an employee who rides to work needs to get home during an emergency. Um, encouragement is also celebrating Bike to Work Day or Bike Month, um, a, a great way of getting the momentum going. Bike to Work Day is, a nas is nationally recognized and it helps unite cyclists all across the country, um, not just within your community, but all across the country. Um, and uh, helps make the employees feel like they're part of a bigger movement. Uh, this uh, ad or kind of poster is from uh, New Belgium Brewing. It's called Team Wonder Bike. Um, it was it started as a as a club within their company, and and then it grew outside of of the the brewery and well past Fort Collins, Colorado, where they're based. It's now 15,000 members strong, and and um, it's it's a great great uniting. Uh, club. Uh, bicycle user groups, another name for an informal club, um, can also help create a community of cyclists within the workplace. Um, and bike club meetings are a great way to just recognize other people who are riding or other people who are interested in riding and having management see, see that interest and um, a great venue for brainstorming ideas of what the the employees and the company can be doing to, to help celebrate and encourage cycling. Uh, engineering. Engineering tends to be the backbone of any bicycle friendly business. Employees need to have a safe and secure place to park their bike and to know that their bike will be there at the end of the day. Uh, this, the far left photo is USAA, USAA in uh, San Antonio, Texas. Uh, their bike rack in their garage. Um, again, that it's a safe uh, parking lot that people can park their bikes in and know that they'll be there when they get out of work. Uh, the other two photos are actually from the same location. It's uh, David Baker and Partners in San Francisco, and they do an interesting thing. I always include this slide in my presentations because it's so unique and innovative. The middle slide is actually a pulley system they have rigged up in one of their rooms if you can see, the bikes are actually are parked on the ceiling um, above their break room. Um, be, because it's San Francisco, they have limited space. They were really at um, couldn't find much space to, to park their bikes inside, so they created a pulley system. And um, there, certainly, there's some drawbacks to it. Um, you know, wrestling for a room while you're trying to get a cup of coffee with someone trying to hang their bike. But but it's a small office, so they make it work. They also have bike parking outside, which is the adjacent photo, um, just uh, an a inverted U rack there that also illustrates their support of bicycling for their guests. And um, and then if, if an employee wants to park their bike outside, it's, they can do that too. Um, engineering also includes showers and locker rooms. Um, bike repair station, which is the, the right-hand picture, um, it's, they, you can provide simple tools and maintenance supplies such as tube and lube and a pump. Uh, the locker room is uh, quality bike products in Bloomington, Minnesota, and then the, uh, the repair stand kind of maintenance area is Cat Eye in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, evaluation. Unfortunately, I don't have any snazzy photos to uh, represent evaluation. Um, okay, I guess I I have to speak up a bit. <laughs> I hope everyone can hear me. Um, okay, uh, evaluation. I don't have any snazzy photos uh, to represent evaluation because honestly, it probably is the least sexy of the of the four components. But any successful business knows that you really don't get anywhere without setting goals, benchmarking planning on where you're going, and evaluating where you've been. So uh, examples of evaluation are um, to, to survey your employees, find out what, what is working for them, what would get them riding more, uh, creating a bike plan and setting some goals. Uh, a great thing I recommend is just appoint a bike coordinator uh, to oversee that the bike programs are working as intended. And just identifying someone in your office that is going to be responsible for those programs and facilities um, is, is a great way of showing that the company is, 
is is investing in in their in their program. So now think back to the score of your quiz at the beginning of this presentation, and if you scored five points or higher, uh, consider applying to the league's vice friendly business program. Uh, it's uh, if you think you can implement five points or more of bike related programs or facilities within the next few months, you should also consider applying. It is a free recognition program uh, with generous support from Trek and Bikes Belong, and it identifies bike friendly businesses throughout the country. It also offers technical assistance to improve and is a clearinghouse for best practices. Um, so for all in interested in the application, it's available at bicyclefriendlybusiness.org, and our next deadline is January 15th. So I guess if there are any questions, I can take them after Jeremy speaks, and um, I'm certainly I'm available by email or phone after the webinar um, if you have anything follow-up that you haven't thought of now um, or after Jeremy speaks. So um, I'll turn it back to you, Julie. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much, Allison. That was really a great informative presentation. Um, there are questions that are in the question and answer queue, and you can go ahead and, and answer those. And if you have questions, um, please just simply go to the, the Q&A manager. You can type your question in, and uh, Allison will answer that for you. Uh, okay, so we're going to move on to our next presentation. Okay, our next presentation is about the bicycle commuter benefit. And Jeremy, a little background on Jeremy. Jeremy is the Director of Marketing for ACOR Services USA, which is a leader in his employee benefit solutions and career provider of national commuter benefit programs, uh, commuter check and wired commute. Jeremy was integral in launching ACOR's commuter check for bicycling product line to address the new provision for bicycle commuting benefits in early 2009. Prior to join, joining ACOR in 2008, Jeremy honed his marketing skills in various industries, including software, wireless communications, and also supply chain management. Jeremy, I'm going to turn the time over to you for your presentation. Thank you, Julie, and I just wanted to thank uh, Best Week best workplace for commuters for putting this presentation on. Um, I'm going to go uh, first over the bicycle commute, what the pre-tax benefit is and how it relates to bicycling. Um, essentially, the pre-tax benefit is a uh, IRS regulation that allows employers to offer pre-tax commuting options to their employees, be it for transit, parking, and now bicycling, although the bicycling isn't a pre-tax. The uh, bicycling benefit, as written by the uh, law passed in 2009, is an employer-sponsored subsidy program, and it's really designed to encourage alternative commuting via bicycle rather than even taking the train or driving your car. Um, it falls under IRS Section 132, which governs all of commuter benefits. Um, and I think the major goal of it was to provide equality between the people who take transit, um, drive and pay to park, and those who ride their bikes to work. Just getting used to changing the slides here. One second. Um, Basically, I've gone over most of this stuff, but uh, the Section 132 benefit operates just like your flexible spending account. Um, you can enroll and de-enroll anytime, so it's not like a healthcare flexible spending where you have to enroll at the beginning of the year and use all your money by the end or you lose it. Once you start your, your computer benefit program in your company, you can go in and out of it at any time and employees can choose or not choose to be involved. Um, the benefit covers trans transportation via train, bus, van, pool, ferry uh, at $230 a month, parking pre-tax at $230 a month, and the bike, the bicycling benefit, which is $20 a month and is um, only offered as an employer employer sponsored subsidy. And um, what's covered by the benefit is usually one of the major questions I get 
Um, the allowable purchases are obviously bicycles, although I don't know any bicycle that costs $20. Um, bike repairs, bike storage, and then clothing and safety equipment that are used while you're riding your bike. So, for example, helmets, rain gear, reflectors, uh, the little straps around the bottom of your pants, all of that type of stuff. Um, things that you can't buy with the that you cannot be either reimbursed or buy with a commuter check for bicycling are food like protein bars or vitamin water, um, bike sharing fees, um, pretty much anything not related to riding your bike to and from work. The next big question I usually get is how do we take advantage of the the commuter bicycle benefit if we're not offering the benefit now. And the easiest way is to talk to your HR department and see if they A, offer commuter benefits, and if the commuter benefits program includes bicycling as either reimbursement or as a subsidy um, program. And if they don't, you can lobby with your employer to uh, get the $20 per month subsidy for the bicycle commuting benefit. Some of the reasons why, obviously, were mentioned earlier by Allison. Um, some of the ones that I always use are the zero carbon emissions. So it's um, one of the best ways for, best, it is one of the best ways to commute. And there's huge wellness attributes to bicycling versus taking the train or driving to work. Um, and then along with that are all the pieces that Allison mentioned, like increased productivity, uh, improve health and wellness, and reduce parking costs. Uh, there are two ways that an employer can offer the benefit. One is a reimbursement program. Essentially how a reimbursement program works is an employer needs to develop a form that they, uh, that they hand out to employees who bicycle to work. The employees then submit their receipts with the form signed and the employer then cuts them a check for $20 per month. Um, obviously, they can hold on to the receipts until they get further along in the process, you know, until it's 60 or 100 or all the way up to $240 a year. Um, completely legal, completely endorsed by the IRS, um, and as well as recognized by the General Accounting Office as a proper practice for administering the bicycle benefit. The other option is to use a benefit provider um, where you're actually purchasing a negotiable product like a debit card or, or a bicycle voucher from the, from the benefit provider and handing it to your employees. This really takes a lot of the um, emphasis off of the reconciliation on the backside so that you don't have to develop forms and submit receipts and everything. Basically, once you give the employee that $20 voucher or debit card, they can go and use it at bike shops nationwide. Um, and currently, there isn't a debit card in the market, although I've heard rumblings of one coming out. There is a voucher program in place already. Um, the uh, next piece is mainly about the core services product that goes along with the commuter check, uh, along with the commuter benefit program, and it is a bicycle voucher that is accepted nationwide at uh, probably more than 350 retailers because my presentation is uh, a couple months old. Um, and it, it works just like cash. You hand it to the retailer. They know to accept it, and you're done. You know, it's flexible use for purchases and storage. Um, the next piece, since uh, we launched it back in uh, March of 2009, we've had 130 companies uh, that have purchased the vouchers and with a total volume of about approximately $22,000 from three different states and 14 cities. And on the left, you'll see a list of some of the bigger names who have purchased the, the uh, bicycle benefit. And you know, on the right, I've actually pulled a bunch of the companies to find out how they're using it. And uh, 
many of them are using it as a, a subsidy to offer that equality and compensation for the transit and parking users. Uh, some of the more eco-friendly businesses are are uh, encouraging their employees to tune up their old bikes and start riding them to work, and they've given the vouchers out for that. And then the the remainder that I've polled have uh, been using them as a as a reward or a incentive for exceptional performance. So you know it doesn't just have to be as a subsidy. You can you can give it away for pretty much whatever you want. It's not a large number to give away every month. And that pretty much brings me to the end of the presentation. So I know that uh, Julie's going to open it up to a bunch of questions at this point. So uh, you can take it away, Julie. Okay. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Um, I learned quite a bit about the bicycle commuter benefit from your presentation. I know everyone has questions on whether it's pre-tax or whether it uh, is not pre-tax. So I think you answered that question well. Um, if if you can notice the question to a manager, we do have questions that are coming in, and we've answered some of them. If you look over at the Q&A box, make sure that you've clicked and opened your Q&A box because you'll be able to see those. Um, and I wanted to bring your attention before we um, start answering some of the other ones. The first one, uh, someone wanted to know about May being national, when, when is the next May National Bike Month? And so that answer has been posted. Um, it's a promoting Bike to Work Week 2010 from May 17th to 21st, and Bike to Work Day on Friday, May 21st. And then there's a great question that Allison answered uh, that will be great for you to read. It's, are you seeing a rise in cycling? And she's got some great statistics in this answer. Um, I'll just read a little bit of it to you, and you can read this yourself also. Uh, she said, yes, we are seeing a rise in cycling throughout the U.S. I think this is impressive. Some 42.5 million Americans ride bicycles, according to the National Sporting Goods Association. Uh, this is more than the numbers that participate in other leading sports, um, so that's great. Um, we also had a couple other questions uh, regarding Let's see, we consider ourselves to be bike friendly. What's the one thing an employer like us should do to just support an existing bike to work program? I think that's great based on our poll. Um, and the answer is one big and easy thing to do is celebrate bike to work day. Um, we, I've done this several times at, at many different locations. It really is a good way to go about that. If you're already doing that, set a goal to double the amount of participation for next year. This will undoubtedly lead to more encouragement efforts. Okay, and then Jennifer, um, I'm going to go ahead and have you read some of the questions. I mean, we've got a lot of questions rolling in, and then Jeremy um, and Allison, you can go ahead and answer which ones relate to your area. So go ahead, Jennifer. Okay, okay. thanks, Julie. Um, is everybody here? Are you hearing me okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, first yes. question So, what is the cost for ordering bicycle commuter checks? Uh, the cost for ordering the checks varies depending on the commuter benefit program that you're in, but the easy answer is 3.5% of the face value. So it's $20 times 3.5% is what you would pay for one individual check. Okay, thanks. Another question is why can't subsidy be used in combination with transit? The main reason the subsidy can't be used in combination with the uh, transit or parking benefit is that it is um, the way the law was written. It's exclusive to biking, so you can take parking and transit one month, and you can take bicycle the next month, and you can switch back and forth, but you can't use both at the same time. I know that in Congress they are working to amend that law so that it will be more like the parking and transit, where it's not exclusive and you can use them all at the same time. Okay. How flexible uh, with regard to time should an employer be with regard to new bicycle riders? Uh, that, that's for me. Um, how, how flexible in time in terms of well, expectations? With regard to time as far as I think the intent is that if an employer, if an employee is running late because they're a new bicycle oh. rider and they need extra time uh, for their bike commute to work. Uh huh. Well, you know, there's um, there are companies out there. Um, I know Cliff Bar does this. Uh, just knowing more about their company, um, they actually, if they are riding to work, they get a, they get an additional 30 minutes 
um, to add to their commute. So part of their commute is actually um, on the clock, per se. Um, so that's one way of addressing and, and encouraging bicycling. Um, but, uh, you know, with flexibility is, is an important part to, um, to have in, in an office that is encouraging bike commuting because uh, bicyclists often will um, come across um, other impediments that, that motorists wouldn't. Um, they also can bypass some of those impediments that autos see. So um, I think flexibility is a key. I'm not sure how to gauge flexibility, um, but certainly there, there does need to be um, some, some give and take on both parts. Um, of, of the of the uh, employee versus management, um, but and Cliff Bar has has kind of um, offered the incentive to bike and and actually getting gaining an hour because it's 30 minutes one way, so giving each employee an additional hour um, for of their workday to commuting. Okay, next question: Are employers obliged to participate? with the Bike Commuter Act benefits since it was passed by the Fed? The answer to that question is definitely no. The, um, the Commuter Benefit Act is completely a voluntary benefit. Employers don't have to offer it, and except in select cities where it's mandated, like San Francisco has an ordinance where 20 or more companies who employ 20 or more people have to offer commuter benefits. Um, in that case, they I believe commuter benefits is all-encompassing with transit, parking, biking. So they they don't have to offer the biking because it's a subsidy versus free tax, but they are obligated to offer the commuter benefit in general. Okay. Um, does the entire commute trip have to be done by bike, or can it be by bike and transit? Is the, question, is the question related to um, the ability to use the $20 voucher for subsidy? Yes, I believe so. I don't believe that it actually states in the law whether you can use one, you can use more than one mode of transit. Essentially, it, uh, it states that you have to commute to work, I believe it's three or more times a week in order to qualify for the benefit, but it does by bicycle, but it doesn't state that you can't use a train and a bike. However, if I was going to take the the subsidy or the pre tax, I would take the pre tax on the train and pay the twenty dollars out of my pocket for the bicycle maintenance type of thing. Okay, some of our participants had some trouble with the audio during your presentation, Jeremy. Um, can you uh, just recap what is the pre-tax feature of the bike benefit? There's actually no pre-tax feature for the employees. It's completely an employer-sponsored subsidy, so the employees don't see any tax benefits from it. The employers, however, receive uh, $20 per employee per month uh, reduction in um, payroll taxes. So that's really the employer side of savings on your employee taxes, but there's nothing for savings, no tax savings for the employee itself at this point. Okay. Can you use 10 months of the $20 a month benefit to buy a $200 helmet? Yes, you can. The, ch the, the benefit is or the, the benefit is not, uh, there is no time limit on the benefit. The vouchers that uh, Commuter Check offers have a 24 month expiration, and the subsidy is really up to the employer to set up the employer program. You know, they can say, you know, you can do, we cap it at six months of the benefit, so it really is the employer's decision. Okay, is there an effort to change the benefit to be pre-tax for employees? Yes, there is. It's pretty much two days after the law came out. The, uh, the legislation to amend the law went into effect and or has been written and is waiting to be passed. Although it did take seven years from the first time the 
bicycle law was written for it to get passed. So it really is a it's kind of a wait and see game at this point. We don't know when it's going to happen. Okay. How many uh, bike commutes, uh, I guess that means commute trips, are required um, before the $20 benefit um, can be given? I believe the number is three trips. There are three days a week that you need to commute. Okay, where can we find out what retailers accept uh, what retailers accept the ACOR check? If you were to visit commutercheck.com and go on the partners page, you can type in your uh, location and a radius around your location and see if there are offering uh, vendors in the in the, in your area. Okay, for those employers offering this incentive, what are their qualifications for an employee to receive this benefit? And how is it monitored? How do they know that the employee is continuing to commute by bicycle? I think Alice and I can both add some to this question. Um, the, what I would say is the, um, the best way to do it is to develop an internal form within your company that allows that is basically an affidavit that says I plan to com I will commute three or more days a week per month in order to receive the twenty dollar bicycle benefit. But there's no technical way to track it at this point. There are companies out there that are working on uh, intelligent bike racks where a, an employee's bike would have a almost like an RFID sticker that when they put it in the rack, it registers with the company that this person rode their bike to work today and put it in the rack. And it, you can track it that way, but most companies aren't going to install these very, very expensive bike racks at this time. So it's um, kind of an honor system type of thing. Yeah, and I can speak to uh, our office actually implements the program. And we're a small office. There's 14 of us here. Uh, and I'll, we we just self-police it, and in a small office like this, it's pretty easy to do. But we have commuter cards, pledge cards, that says um, for each month, and y you fill that out uh, if you've commuted the. And we set um, we set it for three three days a week, and I, I think the the employer can set the the parameters of that. And then our HR gets the form, and then you just and with the receipt attached to it, and uh, the the um, the HR our HR department person gets that, and then you get twenty dollars in your next check. And if your receipt is for say forty dollars, then you can turn in that same receipt twice, just to make a copy of it. That's how, that's how we manage it. Great, thanks. This is a question for you, Allison. Mm -hmm. How does a bicycle-friendly work site impact the overall uh, commuter program? Um, it, it actually has a lot to do with that, and um, and that's one of the reasons why on our in our program we um, we encourage community involvement. Uh, one of one of the reasons we um, developed this program was because businesses are are so often um, leaders in the community and 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 have a lot of, of leverage, and so if if city officials see that businesses are demanding more bike facilities and more bike friendly roads to ride on, uh, then they tend to listen a little bit more. Um, so so we encourage uh, businesses to get involved with advocacy, the local advocacy efforts in making the roads more bicycle friendly, um, and that leads to 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 um, more bicycles able to, to come into to the office. Great, thanks. Next question, if you spend more than $20, do you get reimbursed $20 each month until you reach the cost of your purchase? I think Allison just answered that question in that um, at her firm anyway, they can return in the receipt multiple times until the until the purchase is completely paid for. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't okay. think there's any regulation that says you can't do that, from my knowledge anyway. So. Right. And if you bought a bike for 
you know, $400, and you can just keep turning in that receipt until you've reached $240 worth if you're biking all those months in the allotted, in the exactly. expected amount of time. Can a rider pay for bike locker rental under the program? Yes, definitely. I actually had the pleasure of visiting the uh, McDonald's Bicycle Center in Millennium Park in Chicago, and they have, I want to say the number's around 300 rental lockers there for the Millennium Park area, and everyone is sold out. Um, the, the facility was absolutely amazing. They had showers, lockers, a, um, a repair facility all within this one place, all surrounded by massive skyscrapers in Chicago, and they um, that's basically how the lockers are paid for is with the $20 subsidy at this point. Are you aware of any states that have passed the laws protecting employers from lawsuits by employees who are injured while biking to work? I No, I'm not aware of any, and nor am I aware of any states to do that for autos either, so. Yeah, um, I, my answer would be exactly the same. Okay, can your form for reimbursement be distributed to us, to the participants? For Allison, you have one on your website, Yeah, correct? we do have one on our website, and we posted that so that anyone can download that um, and use that for their office. We've made it um, fairly, um, uh, you know, some parts to fill in and, and fa fairly user-friendly. So um, if you go to bikeleague.org and um, there's a, a uh, let's see, under our resources, uh, bike, bicycle commuters, you'll find it under there. And those, these are the same ones. Under, and then there's a click for reimbursement cards. It's a, it's a simple PDF. Um, you can do them in black and white, or you can take them in, um, we have ours on a, a card stock and in color, so they're a little bit heftier, but um, certainly they could be done just off of your regular printer. Allison, this is Phil. I've, I've actually pulled the website up on the screen so people can click right there on the reimbursement card right now and download it. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, great. Next question, why is it in the public the public interest to, to subsidize parking? Um, is that for, for me to subsidize auto parking? I'm, or? I'm not sure. That, that's all the information I got. It may be um, a little <laughs> off topic or unless they're talking about bicycle parking. I can answer it at least. I can answer it on both sides, actually. The, um, the way the, the Commuter Benefit Act was written, the intention of it was to uh, subsidize the park and ride location of parking, but they really couldn't find a way. There's no way to really police if they, people drive all the way into work or if they drive to a train station and jump on a train. But in most cities around the country, if you do park and ride, there is some type of fee associated with it. Um, and at the same time, for bicycling, in general, if you wanted to have a covered, safe, secure storage area, most businesses don't have the footprint to put that inside, so they're going to look to places like the Millennium Park in Chicago to um, store their bicycles. Okay, next question. Uh, is the $20 benefit considered taxable income? Not to my knowledge, it's not. Because it's a subsidy, it's it's basically a, a gift from the employer to the employee. Right. Okay. Uh, question for Allison. Any comments on the three-foot law and impacts on increased cycling? Comments on the three-foot law and pa in passing? I mean, just for clarification for everyone else out there, I, I think that's what you're referring to. Yes. Um, uh, some states uh, have passed laws that um, autos must give cyclists three feet length and, and passing them um, for safety reasons. Um, certainly, you know, it's, I think it's a good thing. Um, any type of recognition of cyclists needing um, a safe haven and on the road of uh, be, with cars passing them. Um, uh, so we think that's a good thing. Um, and the other question, was that the second part of that was? 
I guess I would I would think it was how might it impact um, cycling and cyclists. Oh, how might it impact? Well, um, one of the things uh, states are doing are passing these laws so that there, if there is any question on, um, on motorists um, harassing cyclists, whether it's speeding up behind them or passing them and then deliberately stopping in front of them or, or um, you know, throwing something at them, um, there is this law that um, w will um, side with the cyclists. Um, and allow for um, there to, to to recognize the har harassment that's going on. Okay, great. Do you have any advice for an employer in a large metropolitan area with uh, 21,000 employees in 260 different buildings as to how to implement such a program, seeing that um, that it would be, might be easier for a small company? Uh, well, you know, some things are easier for small companies, some things are easier for larger companies, uh, especially if you own the facility, the building that the company uh, exists in. It's a lot easier to get things done. Smaller companies tend to be, in metropolitan areas especially, tend to lease their buildings or lease their workspace, um, so they don't have complete jurisdiction over what they, they can do with it. Um, so big companies have uh, have that ability to install bike racks, um, to allow bikes in the building, um, and uh, other things, um, putting, um, bringing in a pump to, to their work, or dedicating some space in the workplace to to a bike maintenance area. Um, so certainly, those are the the bigger companies are advantageous in those regards. Um, and then also other indoor facilities such as showers. Uh, if you don't own the building, it's kind of hard to get, um, it's often hard to get showers um, created in the building. Um, but if you own the building, showers and locker rooms, can, um, you can dedicate space to that. Um, so, and then the, the, the other things, um, bigger companies tend to have intranets. Um, even small companies, some small companies have intranets. Um, where you can post things just for your employees to see. That's a great uh, venue for posting information on, on safe cycling routes or events, um, a great internal communication um, tool. Uh, so I, I think there's advantages to both of them, and I don't think either big companies or small companies should feel crippled uh, in their ability to, in, to, to encourage work, bicycling in the workplace. Okay. At, the, at the same time, I can tag on to that a little bit um, from the incentive, $20 incentive side of it. Um, as you could imagine, 21,000 employees is going to be very, very difficult to uh, to implement a strict reimbursement program where employees have to fill out the commuter pledge card and turn in their receipts for reimbursement. Um, that's where the the aid of a commuter benefit administrator like commuter check can come into play or even third party administrators like ADP and uh, Ceridian and Payflex and companies like that that offer benefit programs off, often offer um, commuter benefits and it really kind of takes it to the level of direct to consumer through the employer. So if it's in relation to that, I was just contacting one of those uh, companies to find out more. Okay. Are there grants for government agencies that are not allowed to give commuter subsidies? Um, I, I'm not aware of any grants for um, government agencies, no, to, to provide the subsidy. Uh, Jeremy, are you? I am not. I do know that um, federal employees uh, have just recently been allowed to uh, take advantage of the subsidy as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it, when it was first written, it was very unclear if federal employees were going to be able to take advantage of the $20 a month subsidy. But in recent days, it's come to light that they are eligible for that as well as the transit part of it. Okay, next question. Do employers ever express concerns over liability when promoting bike programs at the workplace? Um, 
Yeah, uh, that is a common question um, and one that that is valid and and um, does create a concern with employers. Uh, and that's why I want to stress the importance of including bike education with any program, uh, any bicycle program. I think it should, if um, if it's not already in place, it should be one of the first um, uh, founding um, parts of a program um, because you do want to make sure that your um, people who are riding into work are doing so safely and um, and and coming into your workplace and, and being responsible and parking their bike and um, and and courteous to other people in the building if they have their bike. Uh, we also uh, encourage mentorship programs where experienced cyclists um, help new cyclists in terms of finding the right things to wear or, or actually you know find, helping with bike fit, uh, finding bike routes those type of things that a beginner cyclist might not be aware of and, and might need help with. Um, and a mentorship program can also um, encourage, they can, mentors can also meet up with a new cyclist and, and bike them in. And so, uh, because there's, in, often in bicycling there's safety in numbers. So if someone doesn't feel comfortable riding in um, by themselves, they can have someone kind of escorting them in. Um, often in the bigger city, cities during bike to work week or bike bike to work day, uh, there's um, you know there's groups that happen throughout the city, and you can meet up with a group and bike close to your workplace um, with a with a, a kind of an entourage of bikes. Um, but I, I think the the liability issue, um, you know, office businesses provide um, auto parking. They provide um, transit for um, or subsidies for transit. Uh, oftentimes, you're reimbursed for your mileage if um, you're you're on a work-related trip. Um, and the liability issue, I haven't really heard it come up with that. So I think the the big the big fear of bicycling is, um, you know, just that being on a bicycle in traffic, you are a little bit more vulnerable. Um, but but it is, it is safe. There is safety in numbers. So if more people are doing it in your office place, um, it's it's going to be safer for everyone, and especially the safety classes. Um, so so I encourage you to to kind of start there. Um, but in terms of liability, it's you know it's um, it, it, it's it's a tough question because. Um, I don't know of any lawsuits of anyone being anyone suing their business um, if they've gotten an accident going to work. I, I have never heard of anyone suing their business if they've gotten an accident to going to work in their auto either. So, um, you know, I hope there's never a case, but I, I, I don't know if there ever will be. Great, thanks. Um, next question. Does the league give bonus points to community, communities applying for, quote, bicycle-friendly communities application if they have designate, designated bicycle-friendly businesses? Um, you know, that's interesting. Um, we do not on our bicycle-friendly community application. However, we give um, just a small amount. Well, we ask the question, and we give a small amount of credit for businesses that are located in a bicycle-friendly community. So it's a, it's it's actually a good um, good idea to include it on both applications. Okay. Do you believe the twenty dollar benefit will increase? I think it will. <laughs> I would have to say that yes, it will. The uh, the transit and parking increases every year based on cost of living. So I would assume that the same is for biking because it's under the same law. Are there any tax incentives to help employers install bicycle racks or other amenities? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Okay. Yes. Are there any tax incentives to help employers install bicycle racks or other amenities? Um, you know, it, uh, it depends where you... Um, where you live, there's actually some ordinances in place in um, in cities 
uh, any new development has to have like parking, um, and that includes uh, housing development and business development. Um, New York City just passed a law that any new development there, <laughs> if there's room for new development, um, has to um, include bike parking. Um, uh, I know Arlington, they, any new development there, Arlington, Virginia, um, has to include bike parking. Um, so there, there is, it is mandated in some communities um, at the state level. It, I mean, it's not, it's not at the state level yet. Um, but the other thing is, is that uh, there are some uh, bike rack uh, manufacturers and bike shops that I know of that uh, will actually um, give if you're if you're putting it in the town that they exist in, uh, they will they will sell you the rack at cost plus shipping. It's a it's a steep discount, so that's a, that's an incentive. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, this next one uh, doesn't look like there's a question, but it's just some, some comments. It says, I thought the bicycle benefit was essentially a reimbursement program, which generally requires an existing purchase. Using vouchers seems to allow money toward future purchases. Also with vouchers, there seems more likelihood that they could be used for non-allowable purchases. Any comments? Sure. Um the way the, the Bicycle Act was written, it was written as a subsidy program, and it's up to the employer to choose if they want to do reimbursement or offer a voucher. They left it very open in that regard, mainly because um, when they wrote the law, they were not sure that commuter benefit administrators were going to embrace the law and develop a program around it, like the commuter check for bicycling. Um, the, well, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, um, the way I understand it is the voucher system works um, only, you can only redeem the voucher at a bike shop. So uh, everything within the that, that shop is deemed as bicycle related. It, is that correct? It's close. It's very close. Um, you can redeem it at not only bike shops, but storage areas as well. Okay. Um, okay. And technically by the letter of the law, you can't buy vitamin water or power bars or anything like that. It has to be something used during your commute, um, like rain gear or a helmet or a bike or tune-ups for the bike or storage at your location or at home. Um, and the voucher that we've developed is very specific on the face of it, um, and all of our affiliates for the voucher are very well-trained in accepting the voucher of what it can and cannot be used for. Okay. Next question. Isn't there an employer tax benefit of some sort for offering this benefit? How does that work? Essentially, the, the, subsidy, the subsidy is treated as a, a business expense, and therefore it, it's, it's a tax, it's a the word I'm looking for, a, uh, a tax benefit, but in general I would refer you to your tax planner to make sure that what I'm saying is true. Um, and I can tell you how we do it. We actually, um, just as we offer our employees um, health benefits, health insurance, um, we lump it in with um, our health, health benefits um, because, um, you know, I, it is actually a health benefit to be to encourage our, our employees to ride to work. So that so when and we haven't gone through the the, the t you know tax season yet um, when since including this, um, but that's that's how um, it was explained to me that we would be um, kind of covering this expense and defining the expense. Okay, is it correct that if an employer were to add twenty dollars? Per month to the paycheck of an employee who submitted legitimate receipts, that this amount would then be taxed? Depends. It really depends on how it's added to the check. If it's added as salary, then yes, it would be taxed. If it's added um, as post-tax money or pre-tax money, it, it would not be. Okay. Are there insurance companies that provide bike commuter insurance? 
Um, um, you know, that's a good question. Um, like commuter insurance, um, I, you know, I don't know of any. Um, we the league actually provides insurance for bike clubs. If you're a um, if you're a club that um, that is a member of the league, we co we um, cover we provide insurance for you know club rides and any club activity. Um, so, but I don't know of any insurance companies that are that are covering commuting. Okay, um, I think that's for now all of the questions um, that I have. Oh, here we go, sorry. Um, uh, just a comment, I thought the bicycle benefit was not eligible for pre-tax. It, it definitely is not eligible for, for pre-tax. Okay, and then just to follow up, I think maybe there was some confusion. Um, so the reimbursement could be added as a pre-tax to an employee's paycheck? You could add it as typical reimbursement for other expenses. Most companies do have expense programs in there that allow you to add it um, as part of your weekly paycheck so they don't have to cut additional checks, but it would still not be a, a quote-unquote pre-tax benefit like health care or flexible spending or the other commuter benefits. Okay, Jennifer, was that the last question that we had in the queue, or were there a couple more? Uh, I think you've answered um, all the ones that I see in the queue. Okay. Okay, sounds great. Um, well, thank you very much, uh, Jeremy and Allison, for answering all of those questions. Uh, we had a, a great group today, and they had a lot of great questions for you. And again, this session is being tape recorded, and we're going to send all of you the link so that if you want to listen to it again, um, or there's certain parts that you just want to go through again, you'll have the link to this presentation, and we will email that to you. And again, I just want to thank all of you for joining us across the nation. Um, we look forward to working with you. We're going to have some other great informative web conferences for you. Uh, remember to join us in the Race to Excellence and the other activities that are going on. Again, bestworkplaces.org is our website, and we'll be posting all the current information on new employers that are meeting the standard of excellence, along with the events that are going to happen throughout the year. Um, before you leave us, if we'd like to ask you to please fill out the conference evaluation form, um, that's on your screen right now, and you can go ahead and complete that, and we'd like to hear some feedback from you. Um, go ahead, if you have any ideas for further web conferences, please go ahead and give us those ideas, and we'll look at having a web conference based on your feedback. So Allison and Jeremy, thank you very much. Those were very excellent presentations. I think everyone had great questions, and you answered those very well. And uh, thank you, Phil and Jennifer, also. So have a great day, and we will be talking with you again soon. Thank you. Thank you.